Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Coffee with Dr. Scott. Thanks for joining me on this lovely Thursday morning. Got a fun show planned for you today. We're going to talk about the five things that you need to do before you start running any Facebook ads. Uh, so I'm sure you, well, you're all here on Facebook. So I'm sure you see that shaking. Uh, I'm sure you see all the same ads that I see of uh, the marketers <laughs> trying to get you to use their service uh, to run Facebook ads for you. And I travel around the country. Uh, I see a lot of things. I talk to a lot of doctors and I've heard doctors that have used it, that want to use it. Uh, a lot of people are talking about it. I'm actually in a lot of Facebook groups as well. And people are like, hey, what about this service? What about this service? So I'm going to tell you my take on that. And I'm also going to tell you the five things that you need to do before you decide to run those Facebook ads. Trust me, I've seen those Facebook ads be very, very successful and still not work. What does that mean? I'll tell you more about that here in a little bit. Uh, anyways, uh, Hector, Anthony, thanks for stopping by with me. Uh, question of the day is just where you're from. I know I've used that one before. It shows that I've put no thought into the show whatsoever, uh, but I do. I want to know where you're from. So if you're watching this on a replay, just put what state you're in down in the comments down below. I'm originally from New York. I currently live in, live in Iowa. There's my answer to the question of the day. Um, Push your answer in the question in the comments down below. I was trying to keep him out of view, but he does not seem to want to let me. Got a new puppy yesterday. His name is Puppy as of yet, because uh, my daughter has not named him yet. Cute little Weimaraner, and he is picking at me, and that's why the uh, camera's a little shaky. So sorry for the distractions over there. Uh, again, wherever you're from right now, if you're watching right now live, put your state down below. If you're uh, watching the replay, I still want that state. I want to know you're watching. And I say that because I, I get calls. I don't want to sound like those, those people. I get calls constantly uh, from people who say they've been watching me for like seven months and they've never commented. They've never even pushed the like button. Uh, but they watch my show. They get a lot of value out of it and uh, they just don't do anything. So please hit the like button. Put your state down below. Let me know that you're watching the show. Uh, I would appreciate it. Uh, that goes back to this Facebook ads thing. So let's get right into it. There are, oops, I think I switched. There we go. Uh, there are several things that you need to consider before you would ever consider doing Facebook ads. And the reason I say that is because, again, I've seen a lot of people have success with Facebook ads. And I was about to put my finger up in air quotes, but again, you guys know I'm trying not to do that. Uh, success with their, with um, Facebook ads. And the fact that they're getting a lot of new patients or at least leads. And I, and uh, if you've talked to any of these Facebook ads guys, that's their thing is they want to get you leads that you then need to convert. Uh, and the complaint I hear a lot is that those leads are not very good leads. So the conversion is very, very tough. Um, Sometimes that's true. Sometimes I'm not. I'm not even, I'm, trust me, I'm not picking on the Facebook ad side of thing. Uh, I'm just telling you what I've seen. So the ones that have had success with it, unfortunately, I look at their stats and they tell me, you know, hey, I paid a lot of money for this Facebook advertising thing. Um, and they brought in all these new patients and I was really excited, but it's getting expensive because their practice didn't really grow. And that's the problem here. That's what I want to talk about. Uh, if you're not ready for those new patients, your practice won't benefit from those Facebook ads. And, you know, I'm saying Facebook ads because that's what's hot right now. But it, this could be any type of advertising that you do. Um, I don't know so much about the lunch and learns and, like, relationship type stuff or stuff where you're getting out and spending your time and energy uh, because that's obviously relation building. And it's planting seeds. But when you do a Facebook ad, obviously it's direct response. And the new patients you get from are direct. And when you stop running that ad, you stop getting new patients. Uh, if you go out and talk to a, a group or an event, that has a life to it, right? People remember you. So these Facebook ads are direct response marketing. Uh, and if you get 10 new patients from it and your practice doesn't grow, then what was the value of those 10 new patients? Very oftentimes, what, what I'm seeing in statistics is a lot of new patient displacement, meaning you're getting whatever number of new patients you get per month, whether it's 10, 20, 30, you're getting those new patients every month. Let's just use 20. 20 new patients a month, 22 patients a month, 20 new patients a month. And your practice is at a certain level. And then you do some Facebook advertising, you get 10 more new patients. So now you get 30 new patients this month. And then the next month, your practice is not only not up, a lot of times I see that it's down. 
right? Blows your mind. Like, how could you increase your new patients 50% and your practice be down the month after? Those are the statistics that I see. I see it happen a lot. Uh, and that's what I want to talk you out of today. Get these five things that I'm about to talk to talk about in place before you do the Facebook ads and you won't have that issue. You won't have a new, new patient displacement. You'll be able to benefit from the Facebook ads. You'll get a good return on investment from those Facebook ads. And again, those Facebook guys, uh, and you know, there's, there's some really, really good ones out there and then there's some shysters out there. The really, really good ones is the only ones I want to talk about. The shysters, hopefully you, you pick them out before you pay them money. Uh, but the really, really good ones uh, are still going to convince you that leads or new patients times your case average is your return on investment. But if your practice doesn't grow, that's not necessarily the case. You may have made that much money off of them, but if you could have made it a different way without paying them, I would have rather done it for the cheaper way. Does that make sense? Uh, so anyways, number one, and I got the wrong cameras on here. Sorry. Number one, uh, first thing you need to do is make sure that your case average is in range. Uh, um, good morning, Tyler, Kimberly, Robert, Chris. Thanks for stopping by. What state are you from? Put it in the comments down below. So your case average has to be in range. What does in range mean? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> uh, every one of my clients will tell you that my most uh, common answer is it depends. It depends on where you are. It depends on your practice. It depends on a lot of factors. But the key is you got to get it in range. And in, in the 650 practices that I've evaluated over the last nine years, maybe 10 of them have been in range. Maybe 10 of them have been where they should be based on the doctor's philosophy, style of practice. So you've got to figure out what optimal is for you, and you got to get your case average up there. Now, getting your case average up there obviously means uh, number of visits that you get out of that patient, as well as the average visit income you got out of that patient. So, if you're getting a case average that's in the four or six hundred dollar range, which I see a lot, and you're paying money to get that patient in the door, uh, but you're not getting a lot out of them, and you're not getting any referrals later, that's coming. That's number five. We'll wait for that one. Um, it's very hard to keep running those ads. If you get your case average up into a more respectable range, uh, for me to give a, a range is, is tough because, again, there's different practices, but I, I don't like to see anything less than like $1,100, $1,200. Um, and again, look at a case average. Some of you might be, um, I, I got a call a couple weeks ago from a guy who claimed to be a treat and release doctor, and I'm perfectly cool with that. Like, I don't have any problem with that. But even a treat and release doctor has the opportunity to get $1,100 or $1,200 over the course of a case if you do things right. So you've got to focus on your internal stuff first. If you're getting a very, very low case average, people are coming in two, three times and leaving, uh, and you're making $150, $200, up to $400 or $500 uh, off of that case, and you're paying for that new patient, uh, you're not going to get a good return on your investment. It's very, going to be very hard to continue doing that and paying for those new patients uh, when you're not getting that kind of return. So you've got to get your case average in range. And again, figure out what that is for you. I've got clients that have uh, case averages up over $4,000. Uh, again, my comfort zone is in that 1200 above range. Uh, I see a lot of people doing very, very well at $2,000. Uh, so that's where you want to get your case average and start thinking about what is right for you. Cause I'll never tell you that this is the perfect case average. Uh, a lot of coaches out there will, that's not my style. You've got to figure out what it means for your practice and figure it out, but, but work on your case average, work on your presentation so that you get the number of visits out of somebody that you would recommend. That's coming up again as well as number four. Uh, and also work on your AVI. Figure out other services you might be able to offer. The, again, that benefit the patient. Uh, I'm never going to tell you to provide a service that the patient doesn't need or, or just to make money. But look at things that you want that patient to have that they're getting somewhere else right now uh, and offer that to them in their office so that your daily visit uh, has more value, whether it be nutrition or rehab or, or massage or any of those kind of things so that the daily visit goes up. More visits times a higher daily visit will equal a higher case average. So work on your case average first and foremost. Number two, and wrong camera again, uh, is to fix your capacity. So your capacity, anybody who's watched me for any period of time knows that I talk about the, your capacity all the time. So four things that, to look at in the capacity. Uh, staff, space, equipment, doctor speed. There we go. Staff, space, equipment, doctor speed. Uh, Danny, Molly, David, thanks for stopping by. I see Robert coming in from New York. Anthony coming in from Illinois. Very good. Uh, if you're joining me just now, question of the day is where you're from. So put your state in the comments down below. 
Staff space equipment, Dr. Speed, you've got to get your capacity in range. And that's when I talked about the stats earlier, where you get a whole bunch of new patients, but then the next month your volume is actually lower than it was the month before. Before, So when I go in to do an initial practice evaluation, which I'm out on tour right now, by the way, uh, maybe I'll talk about that here more after number two. Um, I always ask the, the doc to put together 12 months running stats for me so I can see it month by month. And one of the first things I look for is the highest new patient month. And on that highest new patient month, I look at the, the office volume. And then the next month, I look at the office volume. And almost always, it's down. And that just tells me right off the bat that I have a capacity issue I need to fix with this particular client. So when I see that happening, it's telling me there's new patient displacement. There's, there's chaos that goes on when you get a high new patient month. So like I said, the example I gave you earlier, if you have 20 new patients on the regular and you do a Facebook advertising promotion and you get 10 more new patients, so now you have 30, the chaos that creates pushes some people out the door. We don't convert very well on the ones that come through because there's so much going on and we fall a little behind because we don't have the capacity. We either don't have the staffing for it, and that could be quantity or quality. Uh, quantity in the fact that we don't have a number, enough bodies to keep everybody happy. Quality in the fact that they just don't process well and, and, and don't uh, welcome people in and they're not yes people like we'll talk about here as well. Uh, you don't have the space. So you know maybe you're adjusting and doing your exams out of the same room. So that exam, now that you tie it up for 45 minutes to an hour with a new patient, you've got 20 people waiting even if it's three people waiting, but they're waiting 20 minutes. Uh, it, it irks people. It uh, causes disruption in your practice. So here you are seeing all these new patients. You're super excited about it, but you don't grow because of it. So you spent money, you got new patients, you turned, you churned, and you end up in a, in a worse place than you were. Staff, space, equipment. Uh, so equipment has a lot more to do with the daily volume. Uh, you know, if you don't have enough uh, tables for adjusting or if you don't and you can't turn them over fast enough. Uh, you don't have enough equipment for rehab for the number of people that have to get through there or for therapy or whatever it might be that you do. Uh, if your equi equipment is limiting you, meaning people have to wait to get on to something uh, and there's a, an inordinate amount of time that people are waiting, that's going to cause more um, people walking out the back door that you don't see. They just fade away, right? It's not like they call you up and say, hey, this is what happened uh, and I'm gone. They just disappear. Staff space equipment, doctor speed. Dr. Speed being a big one, obviously, uh, and the fact that you've got to be able to keep up, keep on pace, be able to keep up with the new patients without upsetting your regular patients. And if you don't have that capacity, it's not worth running a Facebook ads campaign, again, getting those extra 10 new patients, which just hurts your practice in the long run. You're better off just keeping that 20 and staying steady uh, in that particular situation where you're not ready for it. So that's capacity. Uh, I kind of got off on a tangent there in the, in the middle of uh, things about my tour, but I am out on tour right now. It's actually been amazing here these past few weeks. Uh, geez, I've been all over the place. Uh, mostly on the east side so far. Just got back from a trip to Okaboji, Iowa yesterday. Uh, super fun trip out there, working with a doc that I'm very excited to, to see his growth. Uh, I've got trips coming up here to Nashville, Arkansas, Miami, Charlotte, Providence, Rhode Island, Boston, Massachusetts, uh, Minneapolis. Uh, and then I start my West Coast Swing. We've got uh, Denver, San Francisco, uh, Seattle, Portland up in that area, um, Arizona, Phoenix coming up. So lots of trips where I'm out on tour. Uh, if you don't know, I travel around the country. I, I go into your practice. Uh, I do a, a complete thorough practice evaluation for only 295 bucks. Uh, I write up an action plan for you of what you should do over the next four, six, eight months in order to grow your practice. Uh, and it all comes with a money back plus a steak dinner guarantee. Meaning if you don't like the evaluation, the action plan that I put together for you, when I hand it to you, you're like, this isn't going to work for me. Uh, I'll give you a 295 back plus I'll buy you a steak dinner. Uh, as I said earlier, I've done over 650 of these evaluations and I've never once bought a steak dinner. So, uh, the value you get for that 300 bucks is well worth it. Um, and then obviously if, if you're looking for a coach, we can talk about my coaching stuff after that, but the evaluation is a standalone product. Uh, if you just want that in the action plan, you can get that. Contact me. Hit me up down below. Uh, send me a message. Do something uh, if you're interested while I'm out on tour. Sounds like a good deal, Hector. Yeah. <laughs> Hector has taken me up on that deal, and he says it's a good deal. And he's in Illinois. Thanks for joining me. Uh, all right. So where are we at here? Capacity. We need to go on to number three. And I got the wrong camera again. I didn't set this up well before I got set up this morning. I just got back from a trip uh, on my tour. Like I said, I got back late last night with a new puppy. Didn't sleep very well. Uh, so I got up this morning and didn't set up all the cameras properly. I apologize. 
Anyways, number three, fix your phone. I was going to say that doesn't mean put it down between patients, but it does. Uh, you shouldn't be on your phone in the office. Uh, unless you're watching my videos, I guess that's okay. Uh, but put your phone away. <laughs> Don't have your cell phone. Don't be distracted when you're seeing patients so you can see more patients. But what I mean by that is your receptionist. Fix your staff in the way they answer the phone. I've seen hundreds, literally. Uh, haven't done 650 practice evaluations. Yeah, I've seen, well, maybe a hundred, not hundreds. Uh, I don't want to exaggerate. A hundred situations where doctors do great marketing. They're all excited about the phone ringing and the new patients that they're getting or the leads that they're getting. But their staff is not trained to do what I say, which is reach through the phone, grab that patient, and bring them into the office. Uh, they answer questions. They're super polite. But they don't get the person in the office. So uh, I'm thinking about one client in particular who, who was doing a radio show. A lot of time and energy went this radio show. Made the phone ring a whole bunch with a bunch of uh, looky-loos, if you will. And his staff would just answer the questions and then hang up the phone. Uh, and they weren't dragging them in the office. They weren't uh, taking power on that phone and, and using their authority to get people to schedule appointments to get them in the office. Now, I just talked about your, your capacity, staff, space, equipment, doctor speed. Too many people think that they need to screen people at this point. You know, they want their staff to screen people. Your staff's not qualified to, to screen people. Uh, your staff's not qualified to, to decide who's a good new patient and who's not based on this phone call. Your staff needs to get everybody in the door. Uh, let you screen them when they get there. And, and you can. Uh, and again, it's not a huge waste of time. You want those new patients if, if you have number two in place, if you have the staff, space, equipment, and doctor speed for it. Fix your phone to get everybody through the door. I say you shouldn't screen, but at the same time, it depends on the quality of your marking, right? If you're doing a whole bunch of, um, what's the thing that I don't like, uh, but, but doctors seem to be crazy about right now. Um, what is it where you're, you offer the low price thing and people come in, they, they buy it from them. I don't even remember the name of the thing. Uh, anyways, that has a lot of churn and burn as well. Uh, so those are ones you might want to screen. But if you're doing Facebook ads and people are calling up and they're asking questions, your staff has to be able to turn that conversation around take the power, reach through the phone and grab them and bring them in, which just means simply, uh, you know, turn it to a question. Would you like to make an appointment? Uh, get them on the schedule, confirm that schedule and get them in the office to talk to you. You're going to convert a lot more people that come in the office than you will people that don't come in the office. So make sure you fix your phone. Groupon. Thank you, Hector. Uh, yes, those Groupon ads that bring a whole bunch of people, but they're there for the low, they're tire kickers. They're there for the low price offer and they, they don't convert very well. Uh, those ones... I have a couple clients that do very well with it, so I shouldn't pick on it. But at the same time, the majority of ones that I see don't do very well converting them. So fix your phone. That's number three. Number four. Where is it here? There we go. And wrong camera again. Number four is fix yourself. Um, that could go pretty deep. Like we could, I could get you laying down on the couch. We could discuss some things about your childhood. <laughs> That's not what I'm talking about. Fix yourself means about the same thing as I met with the phone. If your staff is not prepared to take those calls and turn them into new patient appointments that show up, you won't do very well. If you're not prepared to take those new patients that show up and turn them into patients, why bother? Uh, so, so many people out there spending money on Facebook ads thinking it's going to change their practice, and they don't even have a good system. They're, they're one of a couple things. The things I've been seeing a lot lately are people that either worked with as an associate or they worked with a coach that trained them to do things so aggressively that they rebounded way back too far. And what I mean by that is they were taught to push, push, push to get this patient there. And it's like, well, that's not me. So they rebounded to the other end of the continuum and they basically don't push at all right now. They don't, they, you know, uh, any of you have heard my perfect case acceptance talk, they're on the, uh, um, side of the continuum that doesn't even make good recommendations. Um, so if that's you, realize that what your boss, when you're an associate, or your other coach taught you, and what you're doing now, there's a very happy medium. There's some balance in the middle, and you've got to find it. You've got to find what's in your heart for that patient. Uh, and to give you my motto as far as perfect case acceptance is concerned, is to tell the patient exactly what they need, and then cheerfully give them exactly what they want. 
So what I mean by that is, is tell the patients what they need. Too many of you are not telling them what they, what they need. You're simply, you know, let's try it a couple, you know, let's see a couple times a week for a couple weeks and we'll see how it goes. Uh, that patient's gone in four visits, you have a very low case average. You've got to fix yourself. You've got to be able to make a best recommendation without any pressure whatsoever. Find that balance. So you don't need to push. You don't need to be like, uh, again, your boss or your other coach. Uh, you got to find that balance where you feel very comfortable that this is a really good plan for you. It might be more than you thought you needed, but it's what's right for you. And if you want to do something different, I'm cool with that, but at least I've told you the truth. And if you go in and you tell the patient the truth of what they need and they don't want that, but you still give them the pain relief stuff that they do want, you've made a patient for life. They might come in for a few visits and then leave, but they're going to be back because you're honest with them. At the same time, you're going to take a lot of people who came in just wanting that, and then they realize that that's what they need and that there's value to it, and they're going to finish your perfect plan that you put together for them. The second side of that, I said that that's what I've seen a lot is people that worked there, but the other thing I've seen a lot is people that have been in practice 25, 30 longer years, and they used to do a good uh, case presentation, a nice balanced one. And they used to get patients to sign up for care, but at some point along the way, they got burnt out. They had somebody reject them, uh, and they decided that they were going to shrink down to that level and stop making this. They wanted people to like them, so they stopped doing those proper plans and started underselling. Uh, the other side of that, when I say fix yourself, is also those docs who are over pushing, you might, that's not sustainable. Uh, you might get that patient to sign up for care. You might get some money out of their uh, wallet or pocketbook. But if you're that pushy, it's very likely that they're going to tell their friends not to come in there. You're not going to get the referrals that you want. Um, so it's not a sustainable practice. So find that balance for yourself. Fix yourself. Fix your case presentation, uh, which will help, obviously, your case average, which was number one that we talked about here. And in fixing your case average and fixing your retention, you'll get more value out of the Facebook ads. That was number four. What's the next here? Here we go. Number five. Okay, again, referralize your practice. So, uh, referralize your practice. I don't. I don't. I don't even get it. <laughs> so many docs are out there chasing new patients. Facebook ads, newspaper ads, radio, television, doing all this work, thinking it's sexy to be out there, and you don't have your referral system set up yet. If I need more new patients, the first thing I'm going to do is set up a referral new, um, system. Uh, I shouldn't even say that. Uh, if I need new patients, first thing I'm going to do is a reactivation program. I'm going to find people that already know me and like me, uh, and I'm going to go get them back in the office. So when I'm working with a client, that's the number one thing we're going to do for marketing almost every time. It's the easiest. Uh, it happens fast, and they might not be new patients in your mind, but they're new patients in the fact that they haven't been there in a year or two years, but they still remember you like you and they're still having issues. You don't want them going somewhere else, so get your reactivations first. Number two, referralize your practice. Um, if you don't have – almost every client I go to see for a, an evaluation, I ask them where their new patients come from. And they tell me that, you know, Facebook ads or whatever, uh, you know, from the insurance book, and then I get referrals. Uh, and my follow-up question is almost always – yeah. Always. Uh, do you get referrals organically just because you're good? Or do you have some systems in place to encourage referrals? Do you manufacture them? And almost always the answer is it's because I'm good. They're organic. Awesome. I love the fact that you're so good that you get referrals. It's great. Uh, and I always talk about the fact that it's not a matter of you asking. It's the way you practice. And we just finished up Referral Mastery. So if you haven't been watching me for the last few months, you don't know this stuff. But we just went through the entire system of Referral Mastery. It's all about how you practice. It's all about convenience and comfort and compassion and all these things that you have to have in your practice. It's how you practice against them, not asking for referrals. But at the same time, if you have those things in place, asking certainly helps. So you need to maximize your referrals first. If you're not getting 15 referrals per month already, work on your referral systems first. Uh, now, you've also heard me say that that doesn't make them free. Uh, you know, referrals aren't any cheaper than Facebook ads. Uh, they're just better patients, right? To get a referral in the office, you know, if you look at the new, at the book in the morning and you have two new patients on the book and one of them is a referralized patient and one of them is a Facebook ad patient, you know that that one's going to be better, right? You know that that referral is going to be easier uh, to process. They're going to more likely to sign up for care. They're more likely to refer other people. The Facebook is a conversion. 
So focus on referrals first. Uh, and again, they're not free. Uh, they're not cheap. They cost money to take care of them, to have the staff space equipment, doctor speed, to put convenience factors uh, in play. But if you're not taking advantage of those referrals, there's no use going after Facebook ads. Because the other side of that is when you get 10 new patients from a Facebook ad, you need to turn that into 15 new patients from referrals. You need to get 10 of those 10, five of them got a referral and they refer and they won't do that unless you refer a lot of your practice. You put the six essence components in place that, uh, that I've always talked about so that you get referrals and you get them naturally. So work on the referral systems before you start doing Facebook ads. So that's it. Get your case average in order. Number two, get your capacity in order. Number three, fix your phone so your staff can get people in the door. Number four, fix yourself so that you can uh, convert and retain those patients. And number five, referralize your practice. Now, here's the dirty little secret that I didn't want to tell you at the beginning of this show. Because the show is titled, what? Five things you need to do before you do any Facebook ads. Here's the fun part. If you do those five things, you're not going to need to run Facebook ads. Uh, you're not going to have the time or energy to run those Facebook ads. If your case average is in range and you're referralized your practice, if your phone's good and they get people in the door and you fix yourself so you're making a good case presentation, you won't need to do any Facebook ads. You're going to have to start working on capacity at that point, the number two thing. Uh, you're going to be so busy from those other four factors that capacity is going to be a full-time job for you. You're going to be constantly looking to expand, get more staff, expand your equipment, looking for more space. Uh, I heard an interview last night from a client of mine who I worked with a couple years ago who moved into a bigger space, and uh, he had mentioned that, that he had heard me say that, you know, sometimes going into a new space is not always cheap. You know, it could cost you upwards of a couple hundred thousand dollars, and it did for him, but it paid off immediately. Uh, you know, he was worried about taking on that double space because he was full here, but as soon as he did, he got full over there. So you're going to be in that mode. You're going to be in expansion mode. Uh, and you're not going to have time or, or concern for Facebook ads. The best time to run Facebook ads is right before a transition like that. It's right before you move into a new space, uh, you hire new, a new associate. Um, when you have additional capacity that you just got for some reason, uh, whether it be through expansion, like I said, hiring an associate, opening up a rehab part of it, opening up massage, doing something new, great time to run fast Facebook ads. Fill that new space as long as everything else is in, in place. Uh, but if those five things aren't in place, it really doesn't do you a whole bunch of good. And again, I've seen enough stats to know that. So that's your tip for the day. I went, whoa, almost a half an hour show. I haven't done a half hour show in like a year. Uh, but these five things are very, very important. Like, like I said, I'm seeing it so much out there in the Facebook groups, in the comments, everybody's chasing after it. And then I go out and do a tour evaluation. I look at stats and I'm like, ah, what a waste of money. You, know, you spent this thousand, two thousand, three thousand dollars uh, sometimes. And yeah, you got all excited. Look at all these new patients and you didn't grow. Fix these things, get your capacity in place so you can grow. Uh, and then do all the Facebook ads you want after that, if you need to. But again, you won't have to. Uh, anyway, so a uh, little logistic thing here. I am... I have decided that Thursdays are the day. We're going Coffee with Dr. Scott one time a week. Uh, I'm going to put bigger shows like this together for you to get more content to you. Um, one time a week seems pretty right. With as much as I've been touring lately, it's been a little tough to do the daily show. Um, the tour is super fun for me, so I'm going to focus on that. But we're still going to do the, the show Coffee with Dr. Scott every Thursday morning, 7 a.m. Central Time, right here on Facebook Live little tip for you Instagram users. I'm also going to be going on Instagram, hopefully starting next week. We're working out some some kinks in that system right now, but we'll be out live on Instagram as well soon. Uh, so join me next Thursday, 7 a.m. Talk to you then.